Hey everyone, my name is Bab and welcome to Pokelosophy, my YouTube channel where I use Pokemon to teach life, health, philosophy, and introspection to help you become better people. First of all, hello, I'm on camera for the first time. I've been meaning to go on camera for quite some time now. It's been a personal goal of mine to be more comfortable uh, on, on screen with video and audio. And I've obviously overcome the audio with whole philosophy, but video was my next challenge. And the reason being, I actually have a phob not phobia, but a bit of a uh, hesitation for, for camera work because growing up, I went through speech therapy where we used to like record me speaking and stuttering. And we had to kind of go over your video to understand how you stutter. So while it was for my benefit, it didn't leave me with much confidence of my own personal sense of self. So to overcome that took some time, but I'm happy to be doing a camera video. So again, pleasure to meet you, pleasure to make your acquaintance. And I'm hoping to do more of these camera videos whenever I get a chance, or maybe even incorporate the camera work in the gameplay. I think that would be a lot of fun. I am currently enjoying a beautiful day in Ottawa. It's hot, uh, it's uh, sunny as well, and I'm kind of under the shade and happy to talk to you uh, over my iPhone. And I wanted to actually talk about three ways that Pokemon have helped me as a person. And, and it's the topic that I don't think, you know, I may allude to during like the gameplay videos and whatnot, but I haven't really openly introspected about this. And we're at the six month mark of Pokelosophy. And I wanted to just reflect on how Pokemon changed me or, or replaying it again as an adult. So the first way, and of course, this is all unscripted. I'm not reading from a script. This is like my journal where I do some of my prep. This is all from the heart authentic no filters nothing like that okay so this is just you and me being honest and candid about my experience replaying pokemon as an adult so the first thing that's done is oh well, I, I forgot see i'm trying to be vulnerable here what was my oh the first thing is i really like micro goals i think some people have different clocks in their head so how they like tell the time and how they understand time is different. I think I really understand time in really small time horizons. So what does that mean? It means I'm really good at micro goals. And Pokemon has a lot of micro goals, right? You have to find different items. There's different experience point or um, sorry, to level up a Pokemon, you have to go through experience points. I was keeping tabs of all the different micro metrics and things I had to keep well, tabs on to adhere to my goal. And I started applying that in my own life where I started adding micro goals to things I want to do, similar to experience points on how you level up a Pokemon. And a good example of this is that I work now in half an hour chunks. So this is the Pomodoro technique. And I found that half an hour increments were really good. So what I would do, I'll work like half an hour. Uh, one session, that'll be one tally on my, on my cue card that I use to track all this. Almost like your uh, Pokemon uh, stats page in the, in the game. And I would tell myself, okay, you have to do four ticks of programming because I'm learning how to code right now. And that will be like my metric. Instead of measuring time, I measure ticks with one tick being a half, a half an hour increment. That's been really helpful, but I got the idea from experience points on Pokemon and I'm applying that to my own life. So I really like to take any goal I have and really boil it down to something small. So that's something that I, that's really helped me. And I think it was only Pokemon and adopting that language and mindset into my own life that's really helped me. And I, I encourage you to try it for yourself. And it could be, you know, I'm not saying half an hour for you. It could be five minutes for you. I don't know, right? Everyone's time and their clock is different. So I want you, so, you know, and this is not a new thing, by the way, right? We all know we have to kind of break down goals and plans, but I think how you break it down, how you dice your onions, if you will, depends on what game you're trying to play in life so for me i like cutting my onion onions really small that's because a lot of my dishes that i use have small require small onions so that's a good me you know the metaphor i would use in this particular context and so what is that for you i don't know but that's something you can ask yourself to really gauge your understanding on how you go about life and addressing your goals number two I really love teaching and learning. I love being the eternal student. I'm an autodidact. I love learning. And I think what Pokemon and, you know, learning Pokemon as an adult again, you know, replaying because I haven't played this game since I was 11 years old, probably 10 years old. No, 11, 11 years old. Um, 
is that I'm kind of relearning that self and being a student again. And then I'm also teaching mm -hmm. what I'm learning about Pokemon back to you. And the best students are also the best teachers and vice versa. It's a symbiotic relationship between those two modes of thought, right? One learner, one, one learning. Apologize for this extra noise, there's, there's people outside. And I didn't realize how much I loved that domain. And I reflect back in my life, especially in university, where I would talk to all kinds of people from all walks of life. And I was teaching people about all kinds of stuff. My favorite job in university was being a TA. Uh, I was also running programs in residence. And it's such a natural, fun muscle I use. And I like teaching in unconventional ways. So the idea of Pokemon being a, a metaphor for life, to teach you life mechanics, or part, even a little bit of life mechanics through Pokemon, because Pokemon is a bit monotonous, a bit boring sometimes, but a lot of life is like that. And I think you try to have to, you have to build that muscle through a game like Pokemon, which you can apply back to your own life because you're building that kind of mental model in your head of how the game works. You can use that as a template to put it back in life. And that's what I want to teach. That's basically what Pokelosophy was about. So I want to work out that muscle even more. So I'm starting another personal YouTube channel where I will teach and I'll teach and learn different things in my own quirky way. And I think that's the most authentic version of myself that I really want to show the world. Number three. Number three is I actually love the un unknown more than I taught. I thought. So one of the things with Pokemon, the way at least I'm playing in the Pokelosophy methods, I'm not using guides. The only thing I do look up is things like different learn sets for different Pokemon or... Um, different TMs, like simple things that I think it's fair knowledge to access, but things like where do you find X, Y, and Z. I've only ever used that twice to actually get through an obstacle. For the most part, I've been crowdsourcing that information from people like one of my top commenters, Juris Jermaine, holler. Uh, he's been a great instrumental source and some of the other fans have been inter instrumental for my learning with that, but I'm in the unknown. I have no idea. I forgot a lot of the game, especially the middle, right? You know human bias is funny in that we, we remember the beginning, we remember the end, but very little in the middle. This is something that you experience if you memorize a list of, let's say, 10 things. You might memorize the first two and the last two, but not the middle. It's a, it's a very common experience among among uh, among people, now, regardless of your neurotype or how you identify. And so being in the unknown and in learning to enjoy it has been an incredible muscle that I've developed and I'm translating it in other parts of my life. A really good example of that would be would be coding. I've been coding a lot more uh, because I'm accepting the unknown, having fun in the unknown. I am trying to just embrace the uncertainty of it. This is a really hard muscle for me because I played the game of Pokemon initially as a kid with the guidebook. So I knew everything, like I knew everything. Uh, I had a detailed plan of how things are gonna manifest and play the most optimal way possible. Yeah, life doesn't work that way. Life is a unpredictable system with chaos and noise sometimes that you can manage the best of yourself for your own life, but sometimes one bad driver in front of you cuts the lane, your day's ruined, right? That's how easily life is fragile and unpredictable, but you have to always center yourself back to the present and stay on course to your goal, right? So that's something that I've been learning a lot and building myself up for, uh, that un being comfortable in the unknown and that it's fun it's a little terrifying, I'm not gonna lie. Like there are times when I'm coding, I'm just like, this is insane, I'm getting nervous, I can't figure this, this answer out. That's the same thing I was feeling when I was in the cave and lost and, or the scope. I couldn't find it, I didn't know anything about that. And all of a sudden, you get it and things just work out in this beautiful, magical way. That's life. So it's cool playing Pokemon without that guide. I think that's always how I'm gonna play when I go to eventually gold, blues, silver, etc. But yeah, so those are the three lessons. So again, just to review, the first lesson is I love micro goals. That's really helpful to getting things done for me. The second thing is I love teaching and learning. I love just like sharing and knowledge in my own fun, quirky way. And the third thing is being comfortable with the unknown and learn, learning to love it because it, as much as it might seem like your enemy, it could also be your friend. Right. And a good example, and just to, to summarize that sentiment, me doing Pokelosophy was an unknown for me. And I made a lot of great virtual friends. And that's why I want to be on camera and say hello. So that is my episode. I promise I'm a little behind. I'm on a staycation right now. So I'm a little behind with 
a few things and I'll hope to do some more videos. But at least I have this, you get to meet me and yeah, I hope everyone has a good day. And, and to my American friends, hope you had a good 4th of July. And to my Canadian friends, I hope you also had a good Canada day. With that being said, take care everyone. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you already haven't and talk to you soon. Take care.